This is the best film camera you can still reliably get for $20. This is the Fujika DL100. It's a point-and-shoot autofocus film camera released in 1983 as a competitor to the Nikon L35 AF and the Canon AF35M. However, unlike those two cameras, which have both skyrocketed in price in recent years, this one can still be found very, very cheap. Now, because I don't want to attack anyone's sacred cows, I'm making no claims that it can match the clarity and contrast of the Nikon L35 AF's 5-element lens, or the enormous and bright viewfinder on the Canon. However, due to a couple of features on the Fujika, and not to mention the fact that it's one-tenth the price, I believe a pretty compelling case can be made for it. The lens on this camera is adequate but not really the star of the show. It's a 4-element 38mm f2.8 prime. Uh, it's sharp, it's fine, it doesn't really set itself apart from, you know, any of the competition. So really there's three main things that work to this camera's favor. So first of all, the focus system. So the autofocus system on this thing is actually fairly great. It's fast and it's accurate, and more importantly, it allows you to have kind of a semblance of control over it. Similarly to on the Nikon L35 AF, by pressing the shutter button down halfway on this, it will display the focus zone that's selected and then fix it. Now secondly, durability. Now in general, these types of plastic autofocus point and shoots from the 80s are not known for being particularly reliable or durable cameras. But this one is probably the most durable one that I've found. So obviously, this thing's not bulletproof, and they do fail sometimes, but compared to something like, you know, a Nikon L35 AF or a One Touch, or God forbid, something like this Canon AF35 ML, this will handle a drop and just general abuse much better. Additionally, because of the somewhat unique method of loading film into this camera, the film transport mechanism is significantly more protected and the film's also a lot more insulated from stuff like light leaks or damage to the film door. And finally, the flash. This thing is a pop-up flash that is, bar none, probably the brightest flash I've seen on a point-and-shoot camera. This is particularly well-suited for that kind of, you know, nighttime, harsh flash, you know, party, nightclub style of photography. Which also ties in really well with this thing being durable, because you know, if you're going to be bringing it around you know, a punk venue, you're going to get it kicked. Now one thing that is very annoying about the camera, uh, although it's understandable why they had to do it, is that the tripod mount is offset. So the camera is not mounted in the middle, it's mounted on the side. Um, which can cause problems using those little tiny portable tripods like this. However, uh, I found the best solution is just to stick a weight around one of the legs and then just have it in like kind of a cantilever sort of thing, and it's pretty stable that way. Also, this is the first time I've shot an actual YouTube video. I don't really know what to do with all this space on the side of my head. Um, subscribe if you liked it.